Amrita, you mentioned the Federal Reserve, the Fed coming out yesterday, and Chairman Powell making it very clear that there, this is no time for a pause. There's not going to be a pause. They're going to continue to raise rates. They're going to stay, go to a higher level than people had earlier anticipated, and they're going to stay there for a long time. How, how does that play into this? Because uh, OPEC certainly looks at the Federal Reserve and kind of tries to balance that. Yeah, and I mean, this is something uh, OPEC Plus have said as well, that high interest rates are going to be damaging demand. And therefore, um, again, they uh, need to balance the market. And that's why they preempted it with a cut. Uh, emerging market as well, they feel the pressure of a higher or stronger dollar. But I'd say the biggest impact has actually been on Europe. Um, we have seen a much stronger dollar versus the European currencies, of course, the pound as well. But that a lot of that is UK's own doing. Uh, and that is adding to the energy crisis in Europe, given already where natural gas prices are. I mean, uh, uh, the only thing I disagree with, John, uh, on the European uh, or the Russia situation he mentioned, I do think Europe is going to go ahead because for Europe, this is an existentialist uh, um, issue, uh, the, what's going on in Ukraine for a lot of European countries. So, yes, it's going to be very, very painful, uh, but I don't see how Europe is going to backtrack, given how difficult it was to get everybody to even agree to this embargo to begin with. So, uh, the winter is going to be very tough. And I think, and of course, OPEC Plus are very aware of it, uh, but the Federal Reserve hiking rates just adds to that. So, John, if, if they don't backtrack, if, if they go ahead, they may want to have less pain, but Amrita's right just on the idea that it's hard to back down and say, OK, forget it, after you've put together, cobbled together this coalition and after you are trying to make such a point about invading another country on, on the continent. I mean, if they don't, let's say, and if the weather is pretty cold this winter, what are we talking about? What's your prediction? Well, if, if they don't, we'll have to see if those Russian flows can go to their, the current buyers who are China and India who have really stepped up to uh, take advantage of the situation. Uh, I, I, my feeling about the EU, though, still is that, you know, their politicians, you know, moral fortitude isn't necessarily their strong suit. So that's why I think there will be some kind of off-ramp for them on this. We're already seeing fraying in the coalition. Uh, Italy, for example, I think is trying to already is already trying to back out of this uh, whole embargo situation. But, no, we're, we're, we're looking at uh, this is going to be this is the crunch. We're going into the crunch right now, Becky. Uh, it, the, the winter, as Amrita points out, it could be horrific in terms of prices. We have a tremendous diesel shortage here uh, in, the, in the U.S. East Coast as well. Uh, so it's already a problem. So you could be easily be seeing, you know, diesel heating oil prices, seven, eight, nine dollars a gallon. Um, oil prices back over 100, at least for a short period of time, several weeks during the heart of the winter until we can sort of see clear into what things look like for the spring and summer next year. Amarita, we have to run, but do you agree with that? Yeah, I mean, look, we do think prices are going to head back to uh, above $100. And I'll say this as well, that China, as John had mentioned, had, has been quiet and we think zero COVID stays through winter. But uh, the, uh, again, right now expecting a gradual reopening from April. You know, we are here without China today. Once China comes back, that's when really things will tighten up.